What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs, a world where everyone is welcome. Have you ever been told you're not welcome someplace? I have, the employee or cast area at Disneyland and the girls locker room when I was a freshman in high school. Did you know there are places on the planet that you aren't allowed to go to? Some you might get permission to, but it may take a long time and you're gonna have to jump through a bunch of hoops. We did a few videos similar to this in the past, but those really focused on governments hiding stuff and restricting access. Today's video is about forbidden places for whatever reason you can't visit, and it has nothing to do with state secrets or anything like that. All right, let's see what we found. Number 10, Heard Island Volcano, Australia. Heard Island Volcano is in the middle of the ocean, close to Antarctica, and for some reason Australia owns it. It's like right between Madagascar and Antarctica. It's way out there. This is one of the most remote territories in the world. It is home to seals and birds, including those tuxedo-wearing weirdos, penguins. It is also home to more than 40 glaciers, which is very interesting and probably would be nice to see but it's forbidden to go here. This wasn't always a forbidden location though. In 2000, researchers noticed a huge lava flow coming from the island's massive volcano and figured it's just a matter of time before this thing blows. Another reason they closed it down, the place has horrible weather and rugged terrain. The chances of you getting hurt in an environment like this are really high and considering how remote it is with no airstrip, you would be like a two week sail away from the nearest major landmass and a legit hospital. So you'd probably end up dying there on the frozen tundra and becoming food for the penguin birds. Number nine, the Doomsday Seed Vault in Norway. The Doomsday Vault is a seed bank situated in the heart of the Arctic. This is an underground secure vault that houses seeds in case some global crisis or catastrophe kills off all the plants. Let's say we get another asteroid that kills most of us off like the dinosaurs. In the event some people survive and the climate gets back to normal, we can go to the vault, get the seeds, and get the Amazon pumping oxygen again. Sure, the chances of any of this happening in our lifetime are very, very slim. But if you think it's impossible, keep in mind they actually made six Sharknado movies. The vault is only open to special guests on specific days. Requests are put in months in advance, and I read one article that said it involves a background check and it's normally only given to scientists, politicians, and journalists. Number eight, the Vatican Secret Archives, Vatican City. The Vatican has been around a long time, and it's always been a secretive place. Sure, they have tours in some of the more common areas, but some parts of the place are so secretive only a handful of people know what is going on there. One of those places is the secret archives, where they store documents related to the Catholic Church and its good and its bad history. Some of them date back as far as the 8th century. This place is reportedly so big, it has 53 miles of shelves, and entrance is strictly forbidden for anyone who's not a researcher, a scholar, or has some kind of special permission for access. The place includes documents like Martin Luther's excommunication, a letter from Mary Queen of Scots written while she was waiting her execution, and a letter from Michelangelo to Pope Julius II. Yeah, this place has some history and you don't get to see it. Number seven, Fukushima Exclusion Zone, Japan. So in 2011, Japan had a problem with one of their nuclear plants. This was so bad, they told everyone for almost 20 miles around the plant to leave and don't eat fish for a while. This was bad. How bad, you ask? The only one that was worse as far as nuclear disasters go is Chernobyl. And people still don't live there. And that thing melted down in 1986 when ALF was still the hottest thing on television. You've heard of ghost towns. This is a ghost city. I apologize for the limited pictures and video on this one and actually others on this list. Just the nature of the subject makes footage hard to get, at least stuff I could use. Some have some serious copyright stuff on them and I'm not going to use them because I don't want to get demonetized. The fact is, this was a nuclear disaster on an epic scale and right now nature is overtaking that place again. The pictures that you can see that are copyrighted just show foliage and bushes and everything reclaiming all the buildings and the land. It's pretty interesting. A lot like what's going on in Chernobyl. Number six. The Mausoleum of the First Qin Emperor, Qin Shi Huang, China. So everyone knows about the Terracotta Army. That's these dudes right here. They were unearthed in 1974 and archaeologists are still working on them. You can go see them. They give tours, plenty of photos. You probably can't snatch a high five or a selfie from one of them if you ain't a scientist, but at least you get to go see them. 
What you might not know about is there's another mausoleum with more of these dudes that was discovered around the same time. The Chinchir Wong tomb is a place where entry is forbidden. The tomb hasn't even been excavated yet. Opponents of excavation believe that current technologies couldn't preserve anything that the tomb holds. Therefore, access is forbidden to everyone. They're just waiting for the right technology to come that will enable them to excavate it without doing any damage whatsoever. Number five, Pravikya Prana, Czech Republic. Sorry if I said that wrong. It's not one of my strong points. This is Europe's largest natural sandstone arc. Pravikya Prana is one of the most visited attractions in the Czech Republic. At least it used to be. In the early 1980s, they decided to make it a forbidden place. Now there's this whole park with hiking trails all around it. It's a good sized park. So you're able to see the arch. You just got to hike up to it. You just can't cross it or get too close. The reason for the ban is simple. The Czech Republic felt that it was getting too many visitors and this could lead to a collapse, you know, like erosion of the arch. So to reduce the erosion of the landmark, tourists can now see it from afar, but they can't climb onto it like they used to. So no more cool pictures of you hanging off an arch or something like that. You get a picture of the arch and you gotta Photoshop yourself into it or something, I guess. Now here's the real bummer. Geologists have now determined that it's going to collapse in the not too distant future anyway. So they maybe uh, slowed it down, but it's still gonna happen. Just make sure you're not in one of these benches underneath it when it does go. Have your lunch elsewhere. Number four, Chapel of the Ark of the Covenant, Ethiopia. So when Moses went up the mountain to talk to the big man, he gave Moses two tablets with some information on them. Basically, there were 10 rules on how not to be an a-hole in civilized society. The Chapel of the Ark of the Covenant contains the two stone tablets that God gave Moses containing the Ten Commandments. It is reported to have some other artifacts in there, but they're all second-rate trinkets compared to the Ten Commandments. Only one priest is allowed to view the Ark. If anyone else does it, it is claimed that they will implode or explode or maybe just get a bad rash, who knows? I don't buy it. The Ark of the Covenant is supposed to be made of the finest gold. If what Sister Noreen in the sixth grade and Indiana Jones said is correct. If they were, this thing is worth millions, even without the Ten Commandments. And the only thing guarding it is a five-foot blue fence. I don't buy it. Those things should be buried at the bottom of the Vatican or something like that on 24-hour armed guard with a tank. I don't buy it. Anyway, they say that this little building holds the Ten Commandments. No pictures of them exist. You know one of those priests has a cell phone photo, though. Go in there, take a picture. I didn't implode. Look at this. See? You didn't implode. Or do you have a rash? Number three, Proviglia Island, Italy. I found out about this island watching the YouTube channel Yes Theory. They did a video on this place. Those dudes went there. When you hear what I'm about to tell you about this place, you'll probably wonder what the hell's wrong with these dudes. Why would they go there? This is a small island located near Venice in the Venetian Lagoon, and it's where they used to store victims of the plague and the insane. When it was a plague quarantine station, the tiny island is said to have hosted over 160,000 infected people living out their final days alone on the island. I mean alone, I mean no family or anyone that likes them. Just a whole bunch of other people with the plague, They're like a dime a dozen there. It is said about 50% of the soil on this island consists of, of human, human remains. remains. When it was a mental hospital, it is said that people were tortured, sort of like Thanksgiving at my cousin's ex-wife's. This place is forbidden to go to. Nobody's allowed to step foot on it. You can't get too close, but people still do occasionally, but you're not supposed to. I wouldn't. Number two, Room 39, North Korea. Room 39 is a secret organization associated with the dynasty of the North Korean dictators, the Kim family. I know it's called Room 39, but it's actually a building or a compound. I also read one thing that said it was several locations. Regardless, you're not supposed to be in North Korea in the first place, much less this building. The department is believed to finance the family and top party officials' business ventures. I just did air quotes on business ventures. If you want to call business ventures what they do, Go ahead, but they do counterfeiting and drug smuggling. The actual headquarters for Room 39 is thought to be located inside the ruling Workers' Party building in the capital city of Pyongyang. This is where all the bad stuff goes on. These are supposed to be like an evil organization, and this building is where it all goes down. It's one of those places, if you look at it too long, someone comes out and talks to you and probably takes you away. Good times in North Korea. And before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Love for you to become part of our little community here. All right, on to number one. And number one, White's Gentlemen's Club 
England, United Kingdom. Located on St. James Street in central London, White's Gentlemen's Club is the most traditional and exclusive gentlemen's club in the world. This is the type of place that doesn't have a sign. You have to be in the know, so to speak, to know it even is there. If you want to be a member, a current member has to submit your name. You have to be a man of status. Stanley the Welder isn't getting his name submitted, no matter how good of a welder he is. The club was established in 1693 and has had some terribly important men as members. And it's made Maintain the male-only policy up to this day. Some of the current members of this highly prestigious clubs are, for example, Prince Charles, Prince William, David Niven. Well, he's dead now, but he was a current member until he died. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of other dudes that have Duke, Earl, Baron, and Prince before their name. Like I said, it's a very exclusive club. Type of place where, like, only Rolls Royces with a driver drop-off members type place. All right, that's today's list. A little bit different. I thought we'd, you know, change it up a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it, like where not to try and go. Nobody needs to be a member of the White's Gentlemen's Club. I don't even think you can go in there if you're an American anyway. Anyway, all right. Don't forget all the links below. Everyone have a great day and be nice to each other.